Look, my friend, honestly. <laughs> Can one arm beat two arms? We're going to find out. So do I really want to fight with one arm? Well, not really. But having said that, Wing Chun is the art of efficiency. So if I can control two arms with one, then ultimately I'm moving as efficiently as I can. Wiping arm, which is taken from the wooden dummy in our various forms as well in the style, it's a good example of efficiency of movement, where someone's actually punching multiple punches and doesn't really matter how he's punching, what I'm allowing myself to do is to control the line quite simply, bang, which sets me up, or sets him up rather, to be able to hit bang with the other hand, hit bang with the other hand, because even though I'm moving, I'm efficiently controlling one and allowing myself to strike. So essentially I've got one, two, three, one, and then I can move, I can control, and I can hit. So using one arm makes you much more efficient. So wiping hands is a lot easier than it looks. Don't be fooled by it. Basically the guy's punching at me, so it's a lot easier for me to move. What's harder for me to deal with is when you get the person punching and changing the rhythm with the same arm, or changing the height with the same arm, or changing the angle, or even throwing hooks. So if the person's punching left, right, left, right, left, right, yeah sure, it's going to look like it works. But the reality is that someone's going to punch and they're going to change the angle and then they're going to come low and they're going to swing high. So given that to be the circumstances, we have the ideas in Wing Chun to recover the hands much more efficiently to so rise and then from here, move, stick, hit, move in, hit, whatever we move. But the point is, we recover and we move directly and efficiently. And even if he changes the angle and he maybe jumps out and surprises me with the other hand, throw the other hand, I can still recover with the backhand. It doesn't mean I have to fight with one hand only. The point is, it's a lot easier to cut, more efficient to cut the angles and beat the person, especially when he's trying to break the timing and break the angles. Exactly what people will do when they punch you for real. So it's also an issue of control. And what I mean by control is control of your own arms. Can you imagine someone throwing punches at you, and frailing punches, and you're trying to chase the arms? In a sense, you're losing control. What you want to be able to do is, if you've only got one arm, essentially it's a lot easier to control one arm and pick your moments to counter punch when you've got one arm to control that space. So it's an easy reference when you've got one arm to control what you're doing. What is difficult though, is when the person actually starts to change angles. So they punch one and they slip off to the side and they punch low and then they come high. That's when it becomes a little bit harder to use one arm because it's much more three dimensional. Now we've got the answer for that in Wing Chun, it's quite simple. What essentially you do is you move and you track the center. But if for example, my partner hits downwards, as he's hitting downwards, watch the efficiency of the way that I move. My hand recovers down and if he comes up, my hand recovers up because it moves much more quicker and more directly. Now where do you, where do you learn that? Well in Wing Chun, it's very simple. If you think about the form, you recover the hand down and you lift the hand up. It's a much more of an efficient way of recovering from a low to a high rather than priming your hand low and bringing your hand back to punch and be punched. So the idea of cutting angles and learning how to move really essentially is taught within the form and the way you bridge and you recover is really essentially something that's innate and uh, central to learning Wing Chun. So if you like our videos, please subscribe for more information on them. Great.